Hi Rave Kiddos and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be learning about my pet snake once again. She has gotten so many views and I've heard from so many of you guys how much you love her. So I'm going to bring her out again today and then we are going to draw her together. So um, first things first, if you haven't seen my first video about my snake, you can go ahead and go watch it. I'll give a little bit of recap on that. And I'm also going to be giving um, a little tour of her enclosure, so where she lives. And then I'm going to take her out, we're going to look at her, and then we're going to get our pieces of paper, our crayons and everything, and we are going to go ahead and draw her together. I'm so excited. It's going to be so fun. Let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, you guys. So this is where my snake lives. She has a 20-gallon tank. So as you can see, it's pretty big. And then right beneath her, there's Greg. Um, we have another video on Greg if you want to go ahead and watch that. He's a leopard gecko. So we'll start over here. So this is her water bowl. She can come and drink water here. She can also um, go ahead and take a little dip if she's feeling dehydrated. So she can fit her whole body inside of this water bowl. And that's how it's supposed to be. If your water bowl is too small and they can't fit in it, that's not good because if they're trying to shed, um, they need to have a lot of moisture. So having them, um, having a water bowl that's big enough is super important. So let's go ahead and move over this way. So that rock, that gray rock in the back, that is her cold hide. So she can go ahead, as you guys can see, there's a little hole in there. She can go ahead and hide in it and there's no heat in there. So it's the cool hide. Snakes can't control their body temperatures like humans, so they have to have a cold place, and then they also have to have a hot place, which is this black box. So underneath the tank, there's a heater, and she can go in this black box. Um, let me see if I can show you this a little bit better. So there's the little opening is right in there. Um, she can go in that bo black box when she needs to get a little bit warmer. So she has her cold hide, her hot hide, and then um, the stuff that's on the ground here, this um, cream, white looking stuff, is called aspen. So aspen is snake bedding, and the reason that she gets this particular type is so she can go ahead and burrow underneath it. So you can kind of see some places where it looks a little um, disheveled, so like right here she probably slid underneath it and came out. Um, so having that aspen bedding allows for her to feel a lot safer because um, she can go ahead and hide under that as well. And then up here, this is where she is right now. I'll see if I can show you guys that a little bit better. Hello. Right up here, she has a little hammock that she likes to use. So she usually comes up here to sunbathe as you guys can see, she has a little lamp up top. Um, so this lamp provides even more heat. So when she needs more direct heat, she'll come up here and she'll just lay and hang out. I've also put some leaves up there so she'll feel extra safe. She can hide under those leaves and doesn't feel super exposed. Um, here, I'm gonna see if I can get even closer. Hello. Yep, she's looking at us. And she was fed a couple days ago, so she should be fine for us to go ahead and take out. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a little tour of her enclosure. She has a little wood branch back there that she can climb on and then just leaves all over the place. I don't know if you guys can see, but in the way back, um, kind of right there, is a humidifier. So that tells me how moist the air is. Um, so if I need it to be a little bit more moist, I can move the lamp over the water bowl and get a little bit more humidity in there. So there's a lot that goes into planning a snake enclosure, um, a lot more than people might think, but hopefully I've made it so it's pretty comfortable for her. Um, and I think she really enjoys it. She comes out at nighttime and, um... She kind of just slithers around, sees the sights, and soon when she gets a little bit bigger, she'll be upgraded into an even bigger tank. 
So anyways, I hope you guys liked learning about this. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to take her out. So I'm gonna go wash my hands and then I will be back and we'll take her on out of her enclosure to get ready to draw her. Alrighty, so I've washed my hands. I'm gonna go ahead and take these little clips off of her tank. I'm gonna grab her light. It's really hot at the top, so you gotta watch out. There's a little switch over here, so I'm gonna turn it off, put it down, and then I'm gonna go ahead, lift this open. She's right here, she sees me, she's a little spooked. Well, she's trying to make a dash. Oh, I see why she's so afraid. She's getting ready to shed. Come on, girly. So when snakes are getting ready to go into shed, they get a little bit afraid just because their eyes, so her little eyes over here, they um, fog up. So when she gets ready to shed, she actually loses her vision for a little bit, um, which makes her kind of jumpy, a little bit afraid. Um, but she's not super deep into shed yet, so she probably has a couple more days to go before she'll actually shed her skin. Um, so I think it's okay that we take her out. But when she's really, they call it blue, when she's really blue, I won't take her out just because I don't want to frighten her or give her anxiety or anything like that. So here she is once again. It's the second time you guys have seen her, but I know you guys loved her so much, so I wanted to show, um, show her off again. So as you can see, her colors, she's red, orange, black. Um, and there's her little face, hello. She has her little tongue, and she's super pretty. Right now her colors aren't as vibrant just because she is getting ready to shed. Um, let me see if she'll let me do this. So you can kind of see her underbelly has a different pattern than the rest of her, which is really cool. It's super unique. Um, every snake has a super unique coloration, a super unique morph. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab, um, you guys can grab, hello, she's coming to say hi. You guys are, she kissed my nose a little bit. You guys are gonna grab your piece of paper. Um, you'll probably need red, orange, black, um, color pencils, markers, paint, crayons, whatever you want, and we're going to get ready to go ahead and draw her. So let's do that. Hi guys. So Lou is safely back in her enclosure and we are going to go ahead and draw her together. So you can draw her however you like. I am going to start with my black marker to just get an outline. Um, so I'm going to start with her tail and kind of just draw like almost an S. We'll see how this turns out. I'm no artist. So that is what I've done. That is her body. And then up here, I'm gonna give her a little head. So this is what my outline looks like does not have to be perfect, um, it's just supposed to be fun. So then I'm gonna give her two little black eyes. One, two, and her little tongue. Looks like that. And from there, I'm just gonna take my, I only have red and yellow, and I'm just going to kind of um, start giving her a little pattern. So down her back, she almost has like diamonds. Um, I don't have a picture in front of me right now, so I could be wrong about that, but I'm just gonna give her kind of what I think her um, pattern looks like. So I'm just gonna give her little diamonds kind of going down her back. Take some yellow. Alrighty, so 
that's what I've done so far. And the diamonds, I don't think, go all the way down her back. They kind of um, fade out, and but I might just do them all the way down. So I, for those of you who haven't seen my last video, I got her um, September of, oh boy, 2018. So I've had her for a little bit. I got her as a birthday gift to myself. Um, so I kind of always wanted a snake. And then I met some friends who had um, a really, really big snake. So my friends had a snake that was called a red-tailed boa. So I think they're from Argentina and these snakes grow to be around eight feet. So even taller than me, probably taller than most of your parents they are super long. Um, and I got a chance to hold their snake and she was super sweet. And from there on out, I kind of was like, I want a snake. So um, time came for my birthday um, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get a snake for my birthday to myself. So this is what it looks like, this little update. But, so she is almost, almost two, no. She was born in October. So, she has a little bit to go. But eventually, she will be um, about this thick and probably around five or six feet. So that's about as tall as I am. So she will get really big. Okay, so I'm kind of just continuing the diamonds all the way down until her tail, even though I know that's not really what she looks like. I just can't draw her actual pattern because it's very complicated, but this is pretty close. And I'm excited to see what your guys' look like. So Lucy just upgraded to even bigger mice. So now she eats small mice, which are about probably that big, that big. Um, so that's exciting. She's gonna start growing a little bit faster. Alrighty, so I'm just about done with her little diamonds. And then I think I'm gonna color in her face a little bit with the red. And then I think I'll be just about done. Alrighty, I'm also gonna color in kind of the bigger open spots. Alrighty, so this is where we're at. I think it looks pretty good so far. She's very red in this in this drawing of her. She's not actually this red in person, I don't think. And then remember, if you draw her belly, her belly is all white and black. So that's super cool. Alrighty, so I think I'm just about done. This is what we have ended with. It's not super perfect, but 
that's okay. And then I'm going to write her name. We see the snake. And there we go. So that's pretty much done. I hope you guys had fun watching this video and learning all about Lucy. Um, and I'll see you guys next time for another video.